Hello and welcome everybody. I'm posting this video to respond to all the comments and the conflict that seems to be going on with the concept of the free electricity generator or the alternating current generator with permanent magnets. I'm going to go over the best way I can on how the process works uh, the physics behind how the current is generated and how you can get more electricity out than in uh, is best I can okay so here we go alright here is my permanent magnet generator wheel as you can see from my previous videos I have permanent magnets that are glued onto the ends or the circumference of this wheel and see these empty coils I haven't wound in I haven't wound the copper in these coils yet but I have in this one okay now the concept on how electricity is generated is that you need a rotating magnetic field inside these coils you see these hollow holes here now in my research that I've done that Michael Faraday did back in the early 1800s is that he discovered that having a coil like this and taking a permanent bar magnet he could stick it inside the coil and create a alternating current just like that you know by making the coil go in and out of the magnet or making the magnet go in and out of the coil he can produce a alternating electrical current or AC AC electrical current was used in this manner okay now the way that the generator is made is that you use these permanent magnets with these coils set up in this formation like this but instead of having hollow holes for the coils is you have a iron core see I'm gonna use this little bar this little bar as an example here okay so because this bar is highly magnetizable and when it's right up close to the magnet the bar magnetizes and becomes its own magnetic field and it the magnetic field that the bar generates or, or produces is always the opposite of whatever polarity is closest to the metal okay so if this was a north and this piece of metal started to become close to it then the metal would become a south pole that's why it attracts you see see the whatever polarity this magnet is this piece of metal became the opposite polarity just by being close to the magnetic field so it made its own magnetic field but it's always the opposite that's why it's stuck to the magnet if you know from playing with magnets that opposite polarities always attract and the same polarities always repel so in this situation we have opposite polarity always being produced by the metal in the presence of the magnetic field of a permanent magnet okay so by having these metal cores stationary and mounted away from the permanent magnets and having co uh, copper wire wound around the core then by getting this to turn you are then causing the metal core to create its own magnetic field to the presence of each passing magnet so if you have a magnet that has a north south north south and it's going by the iron core the iron core will produce a south north south north in response to the passing of the magnetic fields this is what is called the rotating magnetic field that is produced by the iron core inside the center of the copper coil now because you're getting a rotating magnetic field in the copper coil now without having to put a magnet in and out of it or without having to rotate a magnet in the copper coil the iron core is 
providing the rotating magnetic field for you just by the presence of the passing magnets. So by getting this to turn once, you're producing not just one alternating current and two coils from the passing extra magnets, but you're also producing alternating current in all the other coils as the magnets all pass by in a uniform manner. So you would be get alternating current from this coil, from every coil you would be getting an alternating current just by the wheel spinning. And all you need to keep this wheel spinning is a DC motor that is hooked in tandem with this wheel. So you use alternating current from these coils and you set, set up the DC motor to receive a DC current to keep this going from one or two of the coils. I'm not quite sure how that's set up. I'm sorry I don't have any numbers or data to prove any of this, but this is the physics behind what I've been learning. So now that we understand that these metals produce the rotating magnetic field just by the passings of the magnet, then the electrical current is then produced in the wire, the north-south magnetic field or the electrical ions that are moved through the copper by the magnet then go through the wires to another location. I have a fan motor here. You see the current would then go from a setup like this to wires here and this would cause the magnetic field to rotate north-south, north-south. In, in, however fast this wheel is turning it would be proportional to how fast you could turn this metal wheel inside this motor. The difference is that the generator always has to be bigger than the motor that you're trying to operate. So for example like if I tried to start this generator and try to run a much bigger uh, br uh, brushless motor it would cause drag on the wheel and the generator would slow down and come to a stop. So the way this works is that once you get this up to speed then you got a lot of uh, centripetal force or uh, you know spinning momentum and by just by the speed of it alone it, it, it takes energy to slow something down once it's up to speed especially if it's very heavy. So the heavier this wheel is and the faster you can get it going the more energy you can get it to produce so if you get a really heavy wheel magnet like this with north-south magnets on the circumference and if it's really heavy once it once you get it going it would take a lot more energy to stop it at that point than to keep it running see it takes very little energy to keep something spinning like this that's really heavy but when, once it's up to speed it takes very little energy to keep it going but because it's so heavy and the speed is so high and you're getting so many currents from the six coils that the electricity produced the overflow electricity produced would be far greater than what is needed to rotate this wheel and this is just a rough draft design as well. This is what I thought the generator was going to look like permanently but there's actually another design where you have two wheels and these coils are mounted underneath the, the, the magnets like this. Like if I had one wheel here on top of the coils and another wheel below the coils and you would have the the magnets above above the coils so you would get one wheel to turn this way with magnets above the coils and you would get the wheel on the other side to go the opposite direction with magnets so you would get much much more uh, relative differential motion because you have magnet currents going one direction and you would have another wheel on top making currents in another direction you would get basically a lot of current out of the coils in that kind of design so there's a, a link that I'm gonna post with this video 
to uh, show uh, somebody that has built this type of generator already so you can check it out and see how he did it and he's it's uh, his free electricity demonstration video it's it's really good I would suggest watching more of his videos if if you uh, understand this video and the video that he posts so it's very very simple you have copper coils with metal iron cores that produce the rotating magnetic field in the stationary copper and in the stationary iron core the only things that are moving are the magnets because just by the magnetic field being close to the iron core that's all that is needed for the iron core to produce its own magnetic field and start generating electricity without having to move see that's the important factor you can generate electricity without having to move a magnet in and out of the coils. The iron core is providing that for you and it doesn't have to move. That's the significance of this type of permanent magnet flywheel generator. So once the current's being produced, you can send it through wires to different things such as this. This is a step down DC transformer. If you've ever seen a black power adapter that plugs into the wall, well this is what it looks like on the inside. It's just like a small Tesla coil. It has a primary and secondary winding of wire and it steps down the current from 120 volts to a direct current uh, at a lower voltage, say this is probably for 10 or 12 volts. The smaller the coil, the smaller the direct current voltage. The bigger the coil, the bigger the direct current voltage. This can also be used as a step up transformer as well. You just gotta flip it. So that's how that works. And this is how the electricity gets generated. It gets generated by permanent magnets, metals that are not permanent magnets but that are highly magnetizable and highly low re or excuse me, low resistant inductor to transfer the current. like copper and then you send it to either motors like this or you send it to transformers like this and that's how you get the electricity from the generator to whatever location that you're trying to get it to to do work okay okay so hopefully that is the best way I can explain how this process works I'm sorry I don't have a voltmeter or any data or any working evidence or any working machine evidence I should say to prove this but that's why I'm going to post the link to show somebody who's already completed one of these generators and you can see how he did it and see how the overall generator works okay I hope this has a better understanding of how this process and how the electricity is generated for free and I hope you guys can build one of your own Good luck.